Greetings, adventurous travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. I'm baffled by the reception that the cult video got. And honestly, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you are enjoying uh, that content. Uh, today, we're going to continue talking about cult, as I saw that a lot of people have questions along the lines of how do you get people into playing dark games? How do you uh, conceive a horror story and make it in interesting enough for people to actually want to, to join and not feel violated by, by joining? And the first thing I would say is try to think about what a horror game or an emotional game actually conveys. Like, even if you're playing fantasy, you're playing, uh, I don't know, Call of Cthulhu, you're playing D&D uh, for that matter, and you can notice that the setting is nothing more than just a backdrop to the pretty mundane things and pretty mundane emotions that we feel every day. So for example, if you're slaying a dragon and if you're trekking to the top of the local mountain and you have never done such a thing, you would feel almost the same, not the same amount, not the same, it's, it's not the same thing in the game as in the real world, of course, but you would feel the same flavor of emotion, like the achievement, the the struggle was real, even like with those fights that last for, I don't know, seven hours in D&D, &D, yeah, you feel accomplished at the end, you get the loot, same accomplishment that you get by climbing a mountain. The same thing happens with the NPCs, if a uh, valuable and, and lovable NPC dies, you feel grief the same way you feel grief, for example. I wouldn't say in the real world, but I'm trying to think in flavors, not intensities, so you still feel the flavor of grief, and that's the thing. You can certainly make a dark and thought-provoking one-shot for your players better than anyone else can. So uh, all the one-shots, the pre-written one-shots, just ignore them for now and focus on yourself. But before that, if you're one of the people that enjoy the cult content and you're not really sure uh, what this is all about and if I'm gonna make uh, just cult and like dark content or is there more to it, this channel is tied to everything and anything creative, so I tend to think of this as my creative outlet. Currently I am focused on board games and TTRPGs in general, so that's where I will be swimming right now, but I have many more hobbies, too many to juggle honestly. So if you want to see this uh, dude rambling about stuff, then uh, please consider subscribing, that helps me out a lot, joining the Order of the Barrel Keep and becoming another Keeper of the Lake. A little disclaimer, this video contains a review of the horror role-playing game Cult, which is known for its exploration of sensitive and graphic themes. Your discretion is advised that some content may uh, not be suitable for all audiences. This review is for informational and entertainment purposes only and does not intend to harm or disrespect any views or sentiments. Please continue watching and to your own discretion. First of all, let's start with the horror contract. Of course, whoever you're playing with, however long you know them, just like in the conversation, like get the people in the pub or or like the, the living room, hang out with people and like try to pitch something like, would you try a system that is more story based, that's more, maybe more darker, maybe has some like sensitive, not sensitive topics, don't, don't use words such as sensitive topics, but say like it is a bit darker or start the conversation as who here likes uh, horror movies. Do you, do you sometimes watch them like indulge? Maybe you're not like super fanatic about them, but you like to see a horror movie here and there you like to read a scary book like gather insight into how much they are willing to explore dark topics if they're not willing to explore dark topics even when it's stupid horror like your average uh, movie where you have like uh, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre for example that is such a like cliche movie it set the, the stage and the tone for a lot of different copycat movies but then again, going through that as a player is something different. That's why you get that by daylight and, and video games in that genre. And there's a bunch of TTRPGs in that uh, sense as well. So try to like uh, scan the, the ground, see where everyone is at, and then uh, use that feedback to pitch a game. Say, okay, we don't know currently what we're gonna play. If you're willing to explore such topics, tell me what you're not okay with. Like, do we draw the line at physical assault? That would be harder to pull off, honestly, if you are like no violence in the game. I would 
probably say like skip this one see this one out you will come next time we will play pathfinder or something i'm a big fan of pathfinder so that's like no shade to pathfinder you know the line of your players better than anyone else right so even if you don't think you know the line if you're playing with these people a lot or semi-frequently let's say if you're playing with them uh, once or twice a month let's say that's the 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 baseline then you kind of know them you know what it works for them and what doesn't if you have a first time comer and uh, don't force them to play a dark game straight on if they are super fans of horror why not just like you have to wait honestly now how would you prepare and this goes for any system it's not uh, cult specific i just think it's easier to do it for cult because to adapt a heroic fantasy game for example for horror it's a bit harder of course you can take notes from this but it is easier to prep for cult which is powered by the apocalypse and is like story based you you as a dm don't have any like roles your prep is very simple so i will go with cult and you will figure out something from this and and use it to make an adventure in what, whichever system Right, so first of all, the premise. And as I said, uh, the setting and the premise is just a backdrop for emotion. Emotions are unchanged in the setting of fantasy and setting of horror, setting of uh, modern world and setting of like, uh, I don't know, 15th century. The human emotion, the human condition, it's always the same. Uh, your perception of the outside world is different, but we are somewhat capable of understanding stuff that is close to our lives. So cult kind of fills this niche for me. Uh, then I would say that to choose a premise, think about like what you're doing with, with people. For example, I'm going camping. Amazing. Is it cliche? Of, of course it is. Like how many horror movies have you seen about camping? Tons. Are forests scary even if you're not playing a horror game with uh, paranormal stuff and magical beings? Totally. There you go. You want some more? Set it in a supermarket. Yep. Why not supermarket? That is, you get locked inside the supermarket and nothing you do can break the glasses because they've just replaced glasses with bulletproof glasses. Why? Because it was used for, uh, I don't know, an operation, military operation, and it had just uh, the market as a forefront. Start from mundane. Start from mundane things. You can always go with a haunted house, like a derelict ship, uh, whatever. And, like, take something that you would see uh, in the real world, something that that is familiar to everyone. Okay. Now, step two is create a character. Well, not you, your players. Let them create a character, and I would emphasize uh, letting them create a character and not doing it yourselves, not giving them pregens. Why? Because if you're playing, for example, Call of Cthulhu or some other system, if there is a lot of uh, things to be written out, fill up, uh, up most of the things as pregens, leave out the personal stuff, and I would really encourage using Dark Secrets from Cult, and if you're prepping Cult, even better, uh, use Dark Secrets and Disadvantages from Cult, because with that, you can somewhat probe what they are into, what they are afraid of, uh, how far would they draw the line. For example, a person that is using a very, very dark, dark secret is more likely to be okay with stuff than someone that said, oh, I've, uh, for example, I didn't take my trash out and that's my dark secret. You would see, you would gouge how uh, far you can go with each player. So I think it's pretty crucial for you to let them uh, decide and let them make the characters. And the next thing is, I would advise that you somewhat enforce that they have a certain relation. In cult, this is called relation and you have like a partner, a friend, a family member, someone that is close to you and with this you have a mechanic of like getting down or up your stability which is kind of like sanity in, in Call of Cthulhu. So you make them create like a partner, a friend, someone that is close to them and bring a couple of those camping with them. Why not? Or if they are not going camping with them, you will find a way to introduce them later. Like maybe you get sick, someone calls your family member and he comes to pick you up and then he's involved in the plot. Basically, um, it's important to have someone like this because you will see in the, one of the next steps, you want to ensure there is a emotional connection that can be first created, reinstated from some form of like preconceived notions. So when you say a partner, you already have a precon preconceived notion about the partner. So now if you have a role play of like five minutes with that player through the partner, you will reinforce that preconceived notion and then breaking that will actually be much more powerful than than like just a monster with a chainsaw. We come to the step three and that would be start before the beginning. Uh, why I say this? 
is because you need a bit of roleplay to get them going, like you're packing for camping, you're planning out stuff, one of the guys wants to well, drive his car, but his car is broken, so you go and ask for another guy's car, and it's a creepy car, he has like those small uh, heads from the dark parts of eBay. He promises that it's a good luck like, charm, and since he had his accident, carries it everywhere with him. So, like, I'm just improvising this right now, you see how easy it is, just, like, start with mundane things. Make them have some mundane roles, those roles will fumble, you will have some funny situations, and it gives you as the DM the holds. If you're here and you don't know what my first cult video that I'm referring to is about, go watch, uh, I think it's how I use the system part of the, the video, where I explain what the escalation levels of horror in my terminology are, and I would start using level 1 uh, escalation level here, like after those funny rolls and everything I would start making it creepy. The trick here is not to overdo it, so be gentle, be very gentle, like just small things don't, don't add up, nothing special. Uh, for example, the, the small heads, that's, uh, that's one of the examples. The other example would be one of the players uh, has a phone that always rings for two rings and then stops. when they look at the phone, no one is calling, so just creepy, unusual, not creepy, not uh, scary, not weird, but unusual stuff starts happening. So now the next step is the journey itself. I mean, the next thing is like a location that is in between where they started and where they will end. So for example, in, in our example of camping, that would be the journey there. Uh, you can always do some form of a journey, a walk home, uh, something like that, something that will come, uh, for example, and spoiler alert for Oakwood Heights, uh, just for two sentences, uh, but uh, it isn't really a spoiler. I'm just like talking about locations, it's pretty much what you're getting in the first five minutes of the session. But you start at the police station and that's the briefing. You go to the house where the crime was committed, that's the journey. And then you go to the derelict ship, that's the destination. See see the pattern here. And now start with the escalation level uh, one and a half, I would say. Like if the players are um, sleeping in the car. The one driving just sees the rain, it's such a heavy rain that starts and then stops. And they, they look at the sky, there is no clouds, it's, it's like totally clear. It was a five second rain, uh, a downpour if you will, which ended and, and nothing is wet. Like must be, uh, must be tired. And uh, the guys that are sleeping, if there is anyone sleeping in the car, and you can certainly roll like to see if they are like it's cozy, it's warm, they are like going through nature, looking for, through the window, roll to see if you stay awake. If they fall asleep, like tell them that in the moment that they s hear the rain, they're actually seeing, like ha they're having a sleep paralysis type of moment where they're seeing blood instead of rain. Maybe there is a rabbit that jumps through the window into the car and he has three legs. Now, Again, it is crucial to not overdo it here. And also, don't make it so that everyone sees it. Maybe one or two tricks, I would say one. One is the golden number for me. One trick, one scary thing should be the one that uh, everybody notices, but other scary things should be like a couple of players uh, see it, or even better, one. One player sees one thing and they might not want to share it with the others, especially if they have like a dark secret where they have been, for example, hospitalized for mental uh, issues, or even better, if they've been hospitalized wrongly and they don't have mental issues, but everyone believed, believes they have. Again, be aware of their triggers. Don't come to someone that has mental issues, that has been hospitalized, that is recovering and telling them like, hey, uh, everybody thinks you're crazy. That's not a good horror move because yeah, you will make them feel uncomfortable, but you will make them feel uncomfortable in a way that will ensure they never come back and play your game. And that's why the horror contract exists. Let's go back to the story. So you're now introducing creepy stuff and if you overdo it, don't worry, you can bring them back. It's called. The thing here is that every crossing and every rickety staircase may lead to unknown worlds. I'm quoting the book here. Let's say, for example, they turn the car, say, screw this, we're going back home. Each of the players comes home and on their bed is one slaughtered rabbit with three legs on each of the, their beds. Strange, they would say. Um, their windows are closed, their door is was closed. They're sure nothing, there, there was no wait for the rabbit to come in. And now they 
leave the room, okay? Let's say they leave the room. So as soon as they cross the doorway of the room, of the apartment, of the bathroom, uh, pull themselves to close the window, like whatever, as soon as their head goes through any portal, e even this, like they are changing their clothes and they are like taking the pajamas and like putting it over their head, as they put it over, as they go through that door, as they put the head over that window to close it, they find themselves like going out of a tent in nature. How did this happen? Oh, one of the NPCs starts laughing. You're finally awake. You have the birds chipping and everything. Uh, you ate that burger on the, the gas station and oh, you must have mixed your meds for nausea with, with my sedatives. I can't sleep. I have sleep problems. Oh, a bummer. It doesn't matter how stupid the excuse is. Something paranormal happened to all of them. And if they start talking about it, the NPCs are like, no, man, that didn't happen. And make it so that they are not sure if you have the ability to like through the conversation, make it so that it doesn't really add up. Make them question if they really ever went home. That's the idea. And then when they're in nature, you're back on track. The next stage is very important. Make them feel like loose in the forest during the day. Make them like uh, fool around. Uh, start ramping up crazy stuff as they are splitting up. Someone is getting the wood. Someone is getting like uh, going to see the river or something like that. Split them up. Start gi giving them strange illusions. Tied to their dark secrets. Tied to their disadvantages. Uh, use disadvantages while they're on the road as well. That that's something I forgot to say. Uh, you can use the disadvantages whenever you want. Disadvantages are very good because you can uh, employ them at any time. Anytime you want to ramp up the the tension, you can like tease them with the disadvantages. But use the dark secrets only for the sake of like. Um, really like uh, shaking up the characters. For example, in the Oakwoods Heights, there is a therapist that starts getting messages from some people that he knows are not alive and, and things like that. So like they, those people are from his uh, dark secrets. So dark secrets are your friend. Here's where you employ them. Each of the players gets like a, a vision, uh, accidentally steps through into Gaia. Everything is strange and twisted. Maybe some of them glances over a purgatide things like that then have a cozy campfire talk at night where the npcs will come they will all have fun they will uh, pour their emotions out they will maybe confess something confess love confess something that they did and they are regretting like make them sound human make the npcs sound human make the players feel that they have the ability and the the permission to feel emotions at the table this is the crucial part you want to give them enough time for them to like settle in and as soon as they settle in ramp up the escalation to the max one of the players goes into a Gaia instantly like on a first bad roll in for example a conversation roll uh, the other players like hear something in the woods there is some being or like you know the movie wrong turn like those mutated uh, humans come out of the forest like start just full-on skip to the climax where everything is shifting they run th through the forest but end up in the same place they began the, the trees are twisting now the trees are much taller than they used to be uh now you go like and make a sh sharp turn now you're not in in the forest anymore you're in the middle of the city you see the the headlights of a car hitting you you like snap out of it now you're chained to like a table and make the players see uh things bad things happen to the the relations make some of them successfully save some like make it so that they have a chance to save their loved ones and their friends don't make them just watch horrid stuff make them have an impact if they don't survive the encounter that's fine, it was a scary thing and no one survived. If they survive the encounter, they will be closer for it. And that's the thing, um, at the end of the day, no one is like that much connected to those characters. It's not like you're starting a campaign, so it's like a fun, how would you fare in the movies where you always sit behind the screen and, and scream, don't go that way, they're gonna kill you. And then how would you fare in that situation? So. Uh, in my opinion, 
this is a very simple session and at the end of the day everyone had fun there were some emotional things happening uh, it was tense at times i started writing a comment to one of the keepers and then I decided that I'm gonna make a video. In that comment, I was generalizing all of this. Now I'm improvising on the spot, like what these things can be. And it's camping for me. What is it for you? Think of it, uh, probe the players, see how they will react, invite them and have fun. At the end of the day, that's what it, all this is for. Invoking some emotions, invoking some panic, tension, uh, having some gruesome stuff happen, but it's fun. You're not uh, aiming to torture them with psychological heavy topics yet. Now when they get accustomed to these types of games like uh, these heart rushing um, adventures, one shots, then you can introduce awkward heights, then you might go into more of a philosophical type of game and as people tend to get used to some gruesome stuff happening uh, in, in a regular like horror movie setting and you can go deeper and deeper and those players will become more and more comfortable with role playing these things and all that will fall into its place. It's not that your specific table is not capable of playing these games and they are not interested. Maybe they aren't. Maybe you have a very like uh, fantasy oriented light group. That's totally fine. You need to find people that are willing to play this. But I, I am sure that everyone that says, yeah, I like to watch a horror movie from time to time when I catch it on TV or something. I see an uh, interesting thumbnail on Netflix, so I click on it. Those people, you can get them playing. Sure enough, you can get them playing. Just think about the weird stuff that you want to include. Don't go over overboard. Listen to their dark secrets. Use their disadvantages. It's all going to be fine. And you're going to have fun. I guarantee. That's all for me. I'm really sorry that my camera died, but I'm still learning and I'm very grateful for your support. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it means a lot to me when I see that people are actually enjoying the things I'm talking about. And there is no better way to prove that to me than just like subscribing. I know that's a cliche thing. Everybody says subscribe, but honestly, like it makes doing this more worthwhile because then you know that there is someone watching behind this uh, dark spot on on my existential crisis rectangle that i'm filming with and as always keep on going keep on loving keep on being creative play more ttrpgs and i will see you in the next one farewell keepers